All right, these are two Rockwell Delta 14 inch bandsaws with the optional metal cutting transmission. Uh, the first one you see off to the right is a 1952 from best I can figure out based on the serial number. Looking it up with VintageMachinery.com. If you haven't checked that site out, it is a wealth of knowledge. Uh, the one off to the left here, a little bit easier for me to figure out based on the casting is stamped in there of 1977. Get the focus there. That was a casting. So this is a second generation, this gray one, and the red one is obviously not factory color. The person who owned it before me uh, painted it that color. That's a first generation uh, gearbox. So what I want to do today is go over the differences between these two gearboxes. The castings, uh, the main housings here, they're relatively the same from everything I can see. <clears throat> same number of holes for screws. I still have the two pins at the top to kind of line the gearbox up when it goes in. Um, the big differences you'll notice when you're looking at these saws from the outside is that style cup, uh, even though it's painted red, um, this is usually brass. And on the second generation, you'll see there, looks like a plumbing fitting, honestly. Uh, there's the Rockwell, there's your cat number. This is a... Uh, this is actually, they were selling this as a traditional just Rockwell. Um, this is in the 70s, they were trying to go away from the Delta name. So, what we'll do over here. So that's a two, oh, before I get too carried away. So I haven't pulled this main shaft out because it's kind of a pain, but there's a main gears that turn. And these are always engaged. So whenever this shaft here is turning, these gears here are turning. Uh, that'll make sense here in a minute when I explain how this uh, is set up. So that's where your wheel goes that drives your blade. So for that transmission, you have that pull that gear in that shaft. And that mates up, that gear we just saw, mates up to this gear here. And what this is, is this is a transmission. So if you look from the outside, you'd have a small step pulley right here. And this is what you'd use for cutting wood, or for metal, excuse me. And when that's turning, turns this little, there's a little gear in there. Get the lighting right here. So, as you can tell, my photography skills are subpar at best. But there's a bottom gear in there. There we go. That turns the bigger gear, and you have this one that rides on a shaft. And the way this is set up, you see that groove cut in there? Well, there's a matching pin inside this cast, I think it's aluminum, uh, slider that moves this um, other gear in and out. When you move this gear in, it will engage with that main gear in the bandsaw that we saw there. When you pull it out, that gear is just free spilling. They're, they're not made it up here. That allows you to pull it out and you can run the pulley, the big pulley for wood cutting, and then this will be disengaged or you can just have this running and it'll just spin along with the saw. When you engage this, then all of a sudden you've taken the, the power that's being put through this uh, stack of pulleys going through here, and that's what's gonna turn at a slower speed for metal cutting operations. Now, somewhere along the line, and I'm not going to try to even guess on when they went to this model design. This is the second generation, and just so we can keep things so you can reference where you are, this is what you'd see from the outside, and you would just see that on the bottom with your stack pulley for the metal cutting blade transmission. Or that's the same design, you have a small gear in there, reduces it down, and this will have a stack pulley on there, or I think they're called cone pulleys, and this sits on top of it. And inside what's going on is you have this, there's this main shaft here, but inside of it, there's a smaller shaft that goes, you can see it moving there. So that moves back and forth, and those two, Opposing Lovejoy connections are what engages and disengages the wood cutting uh, or metal cutting, depending on what process you're doing. So you line these up and you pull, and that's called a Lovejoy connection. So this is engaged now 
from uh, wood cutting. So the force of the motor is pulling on this pulley, goes down through this connection, spins this whole shaft. This thing is just stationary. It has actually a bearing set in there. And then over here is the wheel that the bandsaw blade runs on. You want to go into wood uh, metal cutting, you come over, you push this lever, and what that does is that pushes this other, this disengages this love joy connection, and it would engage this one. The reason this gear is so far out is because it's a pressed in fit, and so I don't want to press it in just for the sake of this because it's a real pain to pull out. So once that's in, then you're disengaged from the wood, so this can spin freely. It's basically a brass, um, brass bushing inside here, and so it can allow it to spin freely. Um, and then this will hook up to here, and so any power that's being generated from this gear set goes into here, and then turns your wheel at a slower speed for metal cutting operations. One issue that you're going to find a lot with these is that uh, tube, or the rod inside there, is sometimes a little firm. And what will happen is you get a lot of dirt and stuff in there, because you can see that isn't really protected from the elements. Because this is where the casting would be on the outside, and so you have all this open to the elements. So your sawdust, your metal dust, all sorts of environmental um, contaminants will get in there and just cause that to be because already I've just cleaned this and just uh, put oil on it it'll cause it to be a really hard um, really hard to push and pull it in and pull it out of gear so it's important to keep those clean keep them lubricated um, and then the other issue that I found with these is that these are uh, roll pins and this one was actually broken so I actually had to hammer it out and put a new one in here because this one would not move at all. It was, it was frozen. One because it was dirty and two it had a broken roll pin. So just be cautious. See, cleanliness is a little bit more important with the second generation. Uh, first generation, obviously, just it's all more enclosed and they've just left uh, less out in the elements for contaminants to get in there. So that's just a quick breakdown of the two, kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, for, please forgive my uh, poor camera skills, but I just want to give you guys an idea of what the two differences are in these transmissions and how they work.